The new GTA Online, Bounty Hunter, and Vigilante, and Bail Enforcement Summer Update is coming soon, but one of the things we need to talk about beforehand is some of the removed vehicles, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're diving into Rockstar's latest GTA 5 Online Update to review some of the vehicles that have been reintroduced for purchase this week. In this video, I will give you a detailed rundown of all of their performance metrics, like top speed, braking, handling, acceleration, and we'll also explore some extra special features and fun facts about these vehicles, because I think some of them actually stand out with those unique features and traits and little details there. So welcome back to another removed vehicles guide here in GTA Online. I cover these every single week and so if you're a fan of vehicle videos in GTA in general or you just like GTA Online then this channel is definitely for you. And with that being said let's get started. If you enjoy this video at any point or if you just find it helpful let me know by dropping a like on it. And if you want to stay up to date with everything GTA Online and Rockstar Games then please consider hitting that subscribe button with your bell notifications turned done. Jumping into number one, we do have 40% off the Emperor ETR-1, and it's on sale for $1,197,000. It is the only vehicle this week that is removed from in-game websites for purchase, of course, and it's been reintroduced this week, that's why we're talking about it, but it's also on discount. And this car definitely stands out in the Supers class category. I think it has some pretty good performance here. It is owed largely to the excellent traction that you get, and you get a really large spoiler, so that's going to enhance your downforce and also enhance your cornering speed because of that downforce. And despite having slightly like a lower revving engine compared to other endurance cars in this game, this car delivers considerable power nonetheless, and it also has a decent enough top speed of, I'd say, it is 121 miles an hour at its top speed. The design, including the front and rear of this car, draws heavy inspiration from the Lexus LFLC Vision Gran Turismo, marking it not as just a high performer in the game, but it's also one of the more visually unique vehicles in GTA Online. I must say, I like the look of the real Lexus LFA in real life, but I'm not so sure about the aesthetics of Rockstar's version of it in the game when it comes strictly to appearance, but nonetheless, pretty decent vehicle when it comes to performance. Then we also have the Karen 190Z that you can buy for $919,380. This car is like a blend of the Toyota 2000 GT as well as the Datsun 240Z, the Nissan Fairlady Z, the Nissan S30, kind of all those designs merged into one. You get offered a nice accessible driving experience in GTA with this car. It's very suitable for beginners, so if you're new to the game, this could be like a pretty decent purchase for you to pick up. The acceleration and the top speed are just decent here. Its top speed is 110 miles an hour, and so it's probably gonna be a little bit lacking compared to other cars in its class, even after you upgrade it. And I think the vehicle overall will compensate for this though with really good handling. It excels in executing tight turns and you get to to really easily maintain your power slides. It's got a good effective suspension that's also gonna allow for a smooth ride over rough terrain and off-road. It is rear wheel drive, but it still has strong grip, so you can be absolutely ensure that you will have a very stable ride here. You're not at risk of spinning out under high torque conditions or you know spinning out off-road or anything like that. It's worth picking up. Then we have the Anissa Vestra. Also, this is available for $1,008,240. I haven't mentioned it, but all of these cars are available at Simeon's Premium Deluxe Motorsport. The Anissa Vestra combines the design elements of 1970s Japanese coupes, so you get the Mazda Savannah and the RX-3 in here. And I would say this car excels in GTA 5 Online. It's got very significant amounts of acceleration when you try and power out of a turn. It has a top speed of 117 miles an hour. It's got superior traction that's suitable both for racing, like on track, with windy turns or even sharp turns as well. It has exceptional grip. However, that is gonna hamper your drifts and power slides a little bit. But what's unique about this vehicle that not many people realize is it's capable of being weaponized. You get the optional front-facing machine guns and those provide moderate firepower here. They're gonna be effective against lightly armored foes and of course like ground targets, things like that, not heavy armored vehicles or anything like that. They're just like the little machine guns that you'd find on the Blazer Aqua and vehicles of the like. And overall, I'd say this blend of performance as well as utility because of the guns makes it a nice choice for racing or even for combat, in my opinion. Definitely one of the cars you should pick up. Next, we have the Shitsu Hakuchao, available for $82,000. Not to get confused with the Hakuchao Drag, but nonetheless, this is a pretty decent motorcycle. It still outperforms the Bati 801 in a few situations, and we'll get into those. Despite the appearance suggesting some strong crash resistance, it is going to perform similarly to lighter bikes in terms of crashing. The Hakuchao's true prowess, though, lies in the top speed. It's at 134 miles an hour, which is probably going to be average in acceleration without modifications, but 
nonetheless, pretty high top speed. You're going to be easily able to rival the Akuma and even surpass the Bati 801 in a straight line. And you can enhance this ability even further, just like with any other bike, by performing a wheelie or, of course, leaning forward. But this bike does have a longer wheelbase than other bikes, and so that's going to contribute to a wider turning radius and overall less maneuverability on the streets. So you're going to be less responsive in the corners, things like that. I would say this bike is ideal for those who want, like, speed and straight line performance in a bike over agile handling, especially, of course, if you're going to be, you know, on going for highway rides, things like that. Additional speed boosts can be achieved by leaning forward, like I said, or taking on a wheelie, but of course, you're not going to be able to handle as easily. This bike is inspired by the Suzuki Hayabusa, so I wish it would, like, blow the Bati 801 out of the water because the Hayabusa is, like, absolutely insane in a straight line, but overall, you get some good aesthetic appeal with this bike and high speed capabilities, despite those small limitations that it has with its handling. Then finally, we do have the Dink of Varus. This is gonna stand out as one of the heaviest ATVs in GTA Online. Of course, with that, you can expect average acceleration and also the inability to perform wheelies because it's super heavy and it's just super bulky, things like that. It does have a good turning radius though and surprisingly high durability in collisions. It's not very likely that you're gonna be dismounted unless you get knocked off balance or hit by a stronger vehicle or something like that. Of course, with the exposed tires, you're gonna wanna put bulletproof tires on there. That's a necessary upgrade to prevent bullet punctures. Despite these characteristics though, I would say this bike, or this ATV actually, is not good in races, even with performance upgrades. It's a five-speed ATV, it's all-wheel drive, if you decide you want to buy it, here's a little tip for you and a little fun fact about this ATV. Add the saddlebag to the back in the game because in the game it acts as a spoiler and actually improves the traction of the Varus, which is pretty funny to me. Overall this week, do we have like insanely good choices? I wouldn't necessarily say so, but they are removed and so they're going to be a little bit more rare compared to other vehicles that you could just buy off in-game websites still to this day. Kind of crazy to think Rockstar removed so many vehicles with the San Andreas Mercenaries update last summer. I hope they don't do it with the new summer update coming out this year. That would be greatly unfortunate. But with that being said, Hopefully you all enjoyed the video here today. We're going to be wrapping things up right here. If you guys did go on to enjoy, hopefully I earned your like on it. And of course, if you are new to my channel and you want to stay up to date with all the best GTA Online, Red Dead Online, and Rockstar Games content, then please consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single thing we post here on the channel. We consistently talk about updates, news, information, tips, tricks, and even leaks, and we'll keep you guys updated here on the channel daily. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube, and you're more than welcome to ask me any questions on those platforms. You can follow me at HazardousHDTV, and all of my social media links can be found in the description down below. With all that being said, thank you all so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next GTA Online video. Adios, amigos.